Welcome back to Boys and Ghouls Film Review, folks. I'm your host, Sarah Stevenson, and this is my co-host, Mike Stevenson. Hi, guys. So tonight we'll be reviewing another fan footage movie called Grave Encounters that was released in 2011. You heard me mention talk about Grave Encounters a while back when we were doing A House on Haunted Hill, the remake, obviously. And I guess when I think about that movie, it makes me think of this movie, obviously, too, in a found footage kind of way. Yeah, a bit, yeah. Yeah, of course, uh, it has the bit where the place, the the rooms keep changing, like from ro- like from Rose Red sort of style. Yeah, they did that sort of stuff, yeah. That, 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 oh, oh, we're lost, and we've been running around here, and we... And, that wall's not supposed to be there. There's supposed to be a door there. Uh, yeah, yeah, a few things like that. Yeah, mm. yeah a little different. A little differences, but, but pretty you know, useful. Yeah. And they, they use the idea. Yeah, a good concept. Yeah, of course, it's an interesting concept worth watching and worth um, seeing. And it's probably one of the better fan footage movies I think that were came out in that year. Mm. I mean, there was like a lot of them. Some of them went under the radar. Others probably have thrived. Others were probably just for naturally not lost in the rush because there was too many getting released. Well, I'm not overly fond of found footage. <laughs> I mean, as time has gone so far, I think there it's become less and less and less. A yeah, there. I mean, the, 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 there's room for found footage. Do not get me wrong, but I think in some cases... It's overdone and sometimes yeah. not done all yeah. that well. It's but a yeah. formula that has mm. lost interest or lost people's yeah. interest. Because, and now the only thing that's interest at the moment is superhero movies no. at the moment. Oh, no, that's the formula. No, that's if you figure form- that crap. Well, well, there is, when I get about the f- found footage, now mm. being fair, mm-hmm. okay, um, some of these are done by independent guys on a very, 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 very low budget. All right. And doing a found footage uh, type film is really a cheap way to go. I agree. So, but there's a balancing act. You, how much is found footage and how much do you sacrifice quality? And that's where some of these people uh, mm. don't get the mix totally right. Yeah. I oh, will run around for camera and everyone's going to go eek, 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 and so on. And we're going to yeah. pretend something's going on and all yeah. of a sudden we've got a movie. It doesn't actually work that way. You yeah. actually need a bit of a storyline yeah. in there as well. <laughs> when we were looking at reviewing this movie, I was I was torn between Meg is Missing and this one, obviously. Yeah. But, of course... Um, I think Meg, Megan's missing is a bit too. It's um, yeah, yeah, very. Uh, it's, it's it's too much close to real it, realism, yeah. and it's very. Explo- it's, I think the better term is exploitation. Oh, I don't know. It's, it's maybe yeah, but the because point is, it deals don't, with. Don't want to touch it. It, it. it might be cause for concern for some people, yeah. so we decided don't, to leave that yeah. one alone, at least for the time being. Anyway. Don't get me wrong, guys. I think it's a good cautionary tale and to the youngsters. The way it's been presented is a little bit too grim. Yeah, it's a bit on the grim yeah, side. Because, I, yeah, I mean, I reckon yeah. the kids could see it hmm. if it was a bit tamer. So, hey, this could happen to you, but because it's too, I think it's too adulty yeah. in its horror it's and too theme. So on the, the nose the people who should when you see think it, about it. Shouldn't see it because yeah. of its content. You As know, I said, you, you know, it's, it's too it's, much on the nose. Meaning, oh, you're on the nose. What are you doing on the nose? I mean, <laughs> it's right. You know, it's pretty much right. It's you know, it's right there. It's right and there. It's, it's, it, um, it's, it's to too, the point. It's too precise. To the, but it's um, too precise and yeah. what could really happen yeah. in real life, yeah. which I have seen several times on the news, yeah. several times, and has not changed. And it may not have something to do yeah. with found footage movies. It's just maybe no, no. there are some sick can we weirdos get a running around. Reviewing this movie, not so talking about we'll get into missing. Grave Encounters. That one's Grave about Grave Encounters of the Nasty yeah. Kind. Yeah. This yeah. one deals like um, with um, a bunch of. People who are, you know, it's, uh, a, it's, a, it's, it's like it's basically a mockumentary, a mockumentary documentary. <laughs> it's a mock, mockumentary of uh, a psychic. Uh, yeah, they go into a haunted uh, hospital, an old desert, abandoned mm. place, and they're going to do the lockdown. Yeah, it'd be like you know, um, yeah, yeah that's all, all the other movies and stuff that done similar and TV shows mm. and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, but the point is, they're going to do a lockdown here, and obviously things are going to go wrong. Hence, if it didn't go wrong, then we wouldn't have a nice little movie, would we? <laughs> yeah, and it's made by two brothers, or they say they're two brothers, but I'm not sure if they're brothers well, they or just they're, friends. They're, they're, they're revered 
to be referred to as the Vicious Brothers. So Yeah. I don't know if it's a nickname um, or that they're real brothers in real life. I can't well, be sure. I don't know. But they're brothers in uh, brothers in media, hey, you know, if, if I mean I media heard, is thicker than water on yeah, I heard of yeah. that sometimes <laughs> that brothers can work on a group project sometimes. But I'm not sure if this is one of them, obviously. Well, I don't know. The Vicious Brothers sounds like a damn cool name to me. So. Yeah, I suppose mm. so. Anyway. I could go and check online if you have your... Yeah. Nah, well, well, <laughs> we'll let the audience at home work that out. Yeah, anyway, the Vicious Brothers. That was so a cool name. they though. both directed, written it, so that kind of leaves it... Yeah, um, less, one, one, less, one less name to worry about. And they probably can't, it, it could be a very, 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 very long name with lots of letters in it. So yeah, yeah, so yeah. who reduces it is a big question on the, everyone's minds. If they, unless they can I say all my bit now, can I? Yes, you oh, may. Produced by... Oh, crikey. Uh, <sighs> Sean Angelski. A-N-G-E-L-S-K-I. Uh, and Michael Carlin. Mm. Okay. Okay. Directed by, or written and directed by the Vicious Brothers, as Sarah has already pointed out, which is yeah. my bit. Um, and directed by the Vicious Brothers, yeah, I, obviously. I just <laughs> said written and directed by, if you're actually listening to what I'm talking about, I've got to listen to you. Anyway, the budget on this one, this is what I really, 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 really like, budget. They made this for 120000 Oh. Which is, you know, for an independent, that's a pretty good spend. Um mm. And a box office that made 5.4 mil. Mm. Now, that doesn't even cover the home media. And the home media has um, obviously helped out there and has also become a bit of a cult classic, mm. which right. means obviously these um, the box office here it doesn't reflect the uh, ongoing sales wow. and possible other... Uh, Filmings and uh, maybe streaming services and other things they've made money on. So well, who knows? They could have made the a shaky, load more money. Despite the yeah. shaky cameras, we do get to see the ghostly appearances, and we don't. And we do get to see what the the protagonists see. Oh, oh I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Yeah, the, well, the well, we see in, a bit of movie. what they see, and we see what happens to them and stuff. And yeah. we see a couple of ghosties up close, yeah. and mm-hmm. it's good. It's good. Basic special effects without going over the top. Yeah. And that's another thing I like about yeah. it. When it goes too much mm-hmm. on the CGI and too much special effects, you, you lose that sense of realism. When yeah. someone throws itself across a room and they yeah. they uh, and they pad in to make it look like they've been yeah. thrown across the room, it looks a bit more real. Well, I should yeah. mention, guys, yeah. aside from directing and writing, the Vicious Brothers also edited and did the special effects side to this pr- they the, did, um, they project. Did. They're very, very, very so good. So these guys put their right. finger yeah. in every pie in this production. They probably stole a pie. No, they must well, be hungry. No, well, <laughs> considering that might be a catering fee, that might be a big. That would be an issue. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway, so um, I'm going to go through some people. Who now, stars in it? It's a big people. question. People. Who is ah, it? well, I'm glad you asked. Okay. Here we go. A Here list, go. a cast of thousands. Well, not a anyway. cast of millions. <laughs> okay. Okay, I've got to mm. work this out because I they didn't use the names all the way through it. So here we go. Sean Rogerson plays Lance Preston. He's sort of like the the main ghost hunter. Yeah. Yeah. And That's it. Uh, Ashley Grisco, G R Y S K O, plays Sasha Parker. Uh, Merwin Bondeser plays T C Gibson. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mackenzie Gray plays Houston Gray. He's a psychic. Yeah, 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 okay, yeah, yeah. And Fred Keating plays Gary Crawford. Now I think the other ones are just a bit actors because yeah, they're mostly just because they're one-offs. the guy who locked them in and different things and yeah. the caretakers and stuff. I don't think anyone else. Yeah, yeah aside from the ghosts, mm. which are probably solid people yeah. and just CGI over their faces here and there. Yeah. Uh, aside from that, there, there there's no names for those people. Well, some have. You down the bottom says punk girl and punk guy and oh, that sort yeah. of stuff. Yeah, um, and, uh, but they only appear just yeah. one scene and, and bath that's tub it. demon and stuff. Yeah. Ah! Or spiritual face. Yeah, that sort of stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, it's little things like that. And, so. of course, like uh, in House on Her Hill, we also have the resident mad doctor in this one. Yeah, whatever the name is. Who is like 
that um, oh, yeah, doctor. Dr. Arthur Friedkin. Yeah, yeah. yeah he yeah. sort of does um, lobotomy. Of the yeah, he, he, it was yeah, a bit like in House of Haunted Hill where the um, the later version of it, mm. the second one, they had uh, the guy there used to do operations on people he shouldn't yeah. have done. Mm. And it got the same sort of theme as that. He was uh, doing naughty things to people yeah. who... Who were in his yeah, care. Yeah, similar backstory. Mm. Like, he mm, was yeah. doing things that were considered... Um, well, doing lobotomies yeah. on people without anesthetics is a good start. Yeah. That's not very nice. Yeah. So, <laughs> he was doing um, similar stuff. And like the doctor from House on Ohio, he got... Some patients broke out of their and cells killed and killed him, stabbed him in the wherever. Not in the wherever. That really hurts. Of course, yeah, unlike yeah, yeah, that... The house on Hill Hill, where the place was locked down, yeah, 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 and the place got burnt down. Uh, he just got stabbed in his office. Nothing technical. That heard me stab- stabbed in your office. Of course, in <laughs> this one, he has a dark, mysterious, you know, secret. We soon learn this way mm. to the end. Anyway, so I'll start going into the movie itself. It starts mm. off opening with the producer of of of, uh, you know, grave encounters, where he explains the fact that Lance approached him for a new series called Grave Encounters. And when the four or five episodes were all good, good footage, stuff like that, but by the sixth episode, all things fell down from here, obviously. And then, um, well, he's got the footage and he just and he's showing it to us, obviously. Yeah, <laughs> Uh, yeah, he said something like, uh, it hasn't been touched, mm-hmm. hasn't been edited, mm-hmm. it's just what we got, bits and pieces of it, and we yeah. pulled it all together. Yeah. yeah, they only know that the mm-hmm. members of the team had disappeared. Yeah, it goes, well, well, I've got here something like, um, The Graving Cows, a paranormal reality TV show directed by Ghost Hunter Lance Preston. Yes. And the guy who's, this Jerry Hartfield guy who's he, who's telling, talking about it, says the show was cancelled after five episodes. Mm-hmm. Following the disappearance of its crew, yeah, and then he presents the raw scenes, uh, yeah, uh, from the recovered footage yeah. of the sixth and final episode. Yes. There you go. That's that, that's the premise of it, pretty much. Mm. So we cut to the footage. We watch um, as he interviews um, the caretaker the owner, and um, a couple of construction workers who... Well, one construction worker who was trying to um, renovate the hospital a bit. For, I guess, to try to well, maybe yeah. func- make it functional again. Well, they were, yeah, they were, actually, in reality, this this hospital was going... They were going to do that. Mm. But I, th- I think it's been torn down recently. But, yeah, mm. it's still there, obviously. It no, it's been torn down. Oh, I said, sorry. I said, but. Okay, okay. <laughs> so, anyway... It wasn't torn down before the movie. Anyway, <laughs> so um, each one of them says, gives them a detailed um, encounter of how they experience ghostly from mom and mom at this place. The, found, yeah, the caretaker says that there was um, um, so every morning or every, there's a window that opens on the second level. I think it's the second or third itself. level, I'm not sure. Yeah, and it's sort of according to, uh, I, well, it's not really important. I mean, the construction worker also tells about um, one of his men got pushed, got up, a pushed up a ladder. Oh, yeah. He wasn't injured or anything, but he quit the, the he, following he, day. No, straight away. He straight away. There's some leaving because he was up a ladder and he got pushed off by somebody who wasn't there. I would have been out of there myself. Yeah. They tried yeah. to interview a gardener, but he turns out he was just new. As and a he new, and so he paid him a few dollars to say he saw something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I saw a ghost. Ooh, oh, yeah. That window. It was very creepy. <laughs> blah, 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 it yeah. was not detailed. Anyway, so they're spending the night. Lance and his team are going to spend the night, the full night, in this um, ghost, this um, the haunted hospital, obviously. Of course, they get locked in by the caretaker. As and, they normally do. And they begin checking the place out. It was It's very dark. A lot of green screen footage, like indicating the nighttime vision, obviously. They've mm-hmm. set up cameras. Uh, Matt, the camera operator, I guess, 
set up cameras in different rooms. The hot spots, according to uh, Mark. Yeah, where they have seen uh, and experienced paranormal activity. Yeah, like the window, um, there's um, in the basement, which is sort of set up like a maze of sorts. And the and bath, where the bath the is, where someone, some girl committed suicide. And I think the room where Scribble was over the wall from a past patient who was um, clearly insane. Oh, no, he's a journalist. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, so... Oh yeah, and some of the um, so we do they do interview people who wit- who witnessed some other phenomena. They were kind of making out in the doorway, and they saw um, the doctor peering at them. Of course, they didn't get harm or anything, but they they explained what they seen or saw. Uh, uh, and they oh, uh, punk, cool, punk guy. Okay, right there. Yeah. We also <laughs> um, get they also we also get the backstory to um, the doctor, obviously the ghost doctor, and his backstory and stuff. Then we time lapse to the night time, and mm. the, they begin to lock up for the night. And as night gets darker, at first there was no signs of ghostly appearances yet. There is no replies. There's no. Um, they use a special recorder that allows you to hear anything be, be, yeah. high, be oh. higher than what you normally hear. Well, not not quite big there. You haven't watched these ghost hunting shows, have you? No. Nope. What they actually is, is you, they use a cheap and nasty handheld voice recorder which generates a lot of white noise because what happens is with the white noise, you can generally hear the voice of the spirit because mm. the white noise gives it some yeah. sort of substance to manipulate. Yes. I've, I've got one of those. Of course, it first off starts <laughs> off no voices, therefore. So anyway, but the, but when they get on the, their own, like a like. Like, let me see, TC goes on for his own. He's on the phone with his wife, and whose daughter wants to say, good, have wonder how he is. She says his good nights. And we see in the background, uh, I think it's a wheelchair moving about slightly. Yeah, yeah, it's part of you do, a do, little do, bit. Do, 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 do. Not a lot, just enough to make you okay. Something's going to happen here. He then goes upstairs, and I think he, this is where he gets pushed by an unseen force. I'll read who has that says. Yeah, yeah Paul, I said, yeah, yeah. Oh, I think I mentioned, I should mention, he also um, gets locked into the room. Well, he didn't get locked in. He gets the door locks itself on him. Eventually, the guys come in and they want the ghost to do it again. Go on, and give us another give one. It, yeah, and, and ghosts do not perform on demand. Anybody who has seen ghost hunting programs, whatever, you can't say, hey, ghosty, go and do this. Ain't gonna happen. Yeah. No, they're yeah. not performers. No. Technically, they don't get paid. No, uh, yeah, yeah, they do it they at do. their own leisure. They're, they're, they're like they're like humans. No, they technically do, they, they do human. they do what they want or they when they want, want like they little want. children. Clean your room. I'll do it later. Yeah, well, yeah. Right. It's like you. Hmm. So, <laughs> uh, funny, ha ha, funny, ha ha ha. I'm like I do clean my room, make much. Anyway, <laughs> so anyway, uh. When TC does fall down the stairs, it's the last straw for him. He wants to leave. And I think the Sasha and the the psychic, the psychic is a fake, so you guys know. He's an actor He's that an they're actor high. Pretending to, to be pretend a to be a psychic. He's not very good at this. I feel a serious I feel a serious oh, presence. grow up. No one talks like that. It, it's yeah. a bit over the top. You know? It is <laughs> over the top. I, I imagine he probably has... Um, they probably interviewed psychics, but most of them refused to get on board. It's too cheesy. Yeah. It's too cheesy, <laughs> and it's probably beneath them. Was the one of these what's was Ghost Hunters or mm. with Zach and the other guys? Mm. Yeah, that, that, that had quite a few seasons. They did a place or two like this, mm. Mm. and they used real psychic investigators. Mm. Mm. Yes. Anyway, um, so I think. they try to um, uh, find, they try to open the. The door, the cu- but bear in mind, it's locked. As in, there's a special chain locked around they it. They locked them in. So no <laughs> chance of getting out. Ah, of course, but. when they do try to get out, the the uh, they door. They break the door open. They break the door open. And the chain breaks or the lock breaks. And guess what's on the other side of the door? Nothing. Another hallway. Yeah. What happened? It's supposed to be outside. Ah. Yeah. yeah. And then's where Rose Red concept comes in. Yeah. Some I remember one of the cons- they said. They interviewed with a construction worker. He said something about the their tools went missing. Yeah, some tools went missing. They thought, yeah, it's out of scavengers or yeah. They thought it was teens Tran- or maybe or um, whatever, transients yeah. or mm. or just scavengers who were just stealing things. Stealing anything? Yeah. Anyway, we don't know, but we do know. 
So they tried to find, um, they tried to break, they tried looking for open windows, but unfortunately we already know that the place is built like a jail. Yeah, yeah all the lower windows are barred and the high windows aren't barred, but you're several stories up, so you can't actually jump out of the window because you kill yourself and you join the ghost. Yeah, yeah so uh-huh. you guys know the times on the cl- clocks, they, of course, it's it's like t- the when they do start noticing it's getting close to daybreak, it's 20, and we soon see that outside it's still dark. And they're wondering why. It's about Weird. The perpetual darkness. They so look outside. You see night. Ah, there, they could be another another dimension per chance. Who knows? I think that they have. Anyway, so um, they try to find the fire exit, but unfortunately when they get there, it, had, it kind of leads them out to... Well, actually, it doesn't lead them out to anywhere. Actually, it just um, it leaves mm. us to a, a blank wall. No, no, they're, they're not a fire. They're going up to the roof. Okay, they go up to the roof, and they got there, and there's a wall across it. Yeah. Up there, on, I mean, just before you get to the top, someone's built a wall there, so yeah. you can't get to the roof. But yeah. Yeah. was that intentional? Was yeah. built by the ghost? Ha ah, ah. They also mm. find another. Um, well, they paid overtime. They also find <laughs> another um, an exit that says. Where uh, exactly. death awaits, and this is was at the front entrance. Yeah, death awaits, and they and they smash through the door saying exit. And there is and they're in another room, yeah. another hallway, and they turn around. And it's got an exit sign on the other side of the wall. Mm-hmm. There ain't no exit, folks. Oh, uh, I should mention Matt disappears at this point, and they keep trying to search for him throughout this. The, throughout the, this time. Well, that's right, yeah, he just appeared about now, yeah. We do encounter some ghost apparitions, creepy stuff, where we see them appear as normal people, but then they suddenly, their the faces, faces change. change and morph into something horrendous, you know, yeah. like me first thing in the morning. Oh, they no, do it, try to it, race it. away from them, and eventually, um, at one point, um, I think it was House, I, th- I mean, not House, I mean, what's his name, the uh, psychic guy? Fred. I don't know what it was. Hasta? <sighs> You're supposed to be. I'm bad with no, weird, weird names. Uh, I'm bad with weird names. Houston. 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 Houston he yeah. he gets um he goes down the hallway and he gets um nearly choked by one of the apparitions. I would have choked him earlier. And but then a blinding flash flashes and he gets knocked out and we don't see him again after this. Uh, now good. they they do find um. Matt eventually, and but he somehow lost his mind. And also, I mentioned they have these um, weird little name plates on their hands. You know, that when you go to hospital, put a little wristband on so they know who you are. So if you pass out or die, they know uh, yeah. who, who, who to phone. Say, pick up the body. Now, yeah, um, <laughs> yeah each one of them has their own name on it. Yeah, Fred Smith, uh, twenty six, whatever. Uh, Whatever, yeah, and yeah. blood type on it, maybe, yeah. and, and what ward you belong to, so they yeah. can get lost, you know. Yeah. TC is the next on our list who gets when they're inside the special um, that bathroom that where the kid that woman drowns, like she slashes her wrist and drowns in the you know, pool of blood. We Ooh, find the it. the bath filled the with blood. blood before it was empty, like drained. Yeah, if that's the word. It. And then we do see it's now full of blood. And then when he approaches Matt, who's looking inside the bath, he gets pulled. The TC the gets pulled in by the. By the demon in the bath. Yeah, gradually pulls him into the bath. Then the part, the, the lights flicker and goes out for a second and the bath flips over. And we see both um, him and the demon have gone. Yeah, all gone. Da, da, da. More creepy starts start happening and they decide to take um, an elevator down. Oh, not an elevator down. They try to open the elevator they so they can get the down. They open the elevator shaft to get to climb down the ladder they're in. Yeah. <laughs> of course, one of the demons starts approaching them. Oh, not demons. The ghost starts chasing them. They try to lock the door, barricade it off. And, but then Matt falls he, and no, he, he walks, di- into, it, he walks walk, into the like elevator in a, like and he dies. Yeah, yeah. He dies. Yeah. And now we're left with Lance and Sasha. So they head down, down, down the elevator shaft until they, they reach the bottom. The yeah. Mm. They start moving around. And, of course, as they're moving, you could see on the times of the clock on their, on their cameras, it's going all over it's the been, place. goes all over the place. Like it's somehow, going like a million miles now. Like, yeah, it's, it's like the clock the clock's it's just like the numbers. Yeah. It's like the numbers you see if you were getting lots and lots of followers in, if you're an influencer. 
Well, I was going to say a little bit like Face of Past, like in the time machine where the time thing was just going yeah. almost in a blur. Yeah. yeah, before it was yeah. like they were in there for two days, or we think... They thought, that's, you know, we think we've been there for about two days uh, they, because they're watches and stuff. Yeah. And now their time doesn't mean anything, of course, they, I believe, because that was implying that they were travelling between time and... Yeah, that's why the clock, the clocks on the camera are yeah. going all skew with. And forget food, guys. At this point, long before this happened, the food they brought with them is rotted out. And that's the other point. You go, okay, the food would not rot that fast. The maggots would not have grown inside the esky. Yes. Now, having Said all the that. cooler, you know, yeah. So you would think, ah, oh, they might have been there a lot longer, and they, things got in there, but they're they're travelling through time where, and the, the things around them aren't, or something or other. Yeah. That's why mm. it's constantly night. They're just going from night to night to night. Mm-hmm. Ah. True. So, or it's the same night, just elongated. Yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. So, so anyway, um, they then try to rest for a little while, and uh, of course, we know Sasha. She kind of coughs up blood. We don't know why. She's something. That's, it just she's, seemed like a good idea at the time. She might be sick or something. We don't know. Well, yeah, she ate something bad. Anyway, <laughs> they decide to rest for a while because they've been wandering for ages. Oh, yeah, down you said we've been walking in one direction in... all day. Yeah. Well, it's for hours, and we still haven't come in the corridor. Mm. That makes you wonder. Yeah. Mm. Then we we're so resting. We see a a white mist suddenly approaching them, and we see... Well, we don't actually see... The mist covers them, and when the mist disappears... Sasha disappears too. So the man, little what's we call it, is both there by himself. Yeah. <coughs> he continues wandering countlessly to, through, to and fro from in the tunnel with no no exit, no no end. And, and he does eat some rats, you know. Yeah, if, if he's getting a bit hungry. It's been a few days since he ate, so he kills yeah. the rat... Drink some blood, eat some meat, yeah. Yeah. He <coughs> starts, the fur ball. Yeah, he starts um, <laughs> laughing, um, and nan- I mean... Maniacally. Yeah. yeah. That's good, isn't it? Mon- <laughs> he like, then yeah. sees... He one, finally does find a door, and he finally opens it, and we see this is sort of where the um, doctor it makes it does his lobotomy um, thingy yeah, So he finds his hidden room yeah. downstairs in the base of where yeah. the doctor did we f- we find, naughty bits. Yeah, we first have find photos of his crew where they've been experimented on. Yeah, fresh photographs and all. Hey, <coughs> one hour photo. That's a good movie. <coughs> yeah. Anyway, we also discover <coughs> an altar, like a uh, like oh, satanic yeah, like, altar. Yeah, like yeah, black magic worshiping and stuff. Yeah, yeah. We mm. s- and we see the ghost doc of the doctor and his nurses planning to start doing a lobotomy on one of the patients, uh, either one a person, a, 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 a nondescript person on the on the table. Yeah. And then they look at the land and say, "Oh, a live yeah. one." <laughs> And then the doctor approaches, makes a scary face, and he starts um, attacking him. And we don't see him, yeah, what cap- becomes him. But cap- we know for a fact he yeah. starts screaming, I'm not sick, I'm, I'm okay, yeah, yeah. But then we cut to Lance completely lobotomized, and he's now saying he's yeah. all better now, I and he can go, go home. I can leave, yeah. But then but he, we... But it looks like blood coming out of his yeah. eyes and stuff and yeah. everything. He didn't look really good. He then... He needs to have a doctor. Yeah. See a doctor. He then... <laughs> The camera cuts out and the video ends there. Then we fade out and that's in the credits for to Roll. They end. Pretty good, hey? I was just going through here something. You were talking about the Vicious Brothers. Yes. It's Colin and... Oh, crikey. Minahan and Stuart Ortiz. So it's three people. No. Colin, Manahan and Stuart Ortiz. Yes, three Just people. Two people, Colin, it's... Manahan, and Stuart. And why are you saying Anne? Colin, Manahan, and, and... Stuart Ortis. That's two people. Sorry, I thought it sounded like three people you're saying. <laughs> oh, Lord, give me a right. Anyway, no, yeah. so... Yeah, they, yeah they, 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 they're not really brothers. No, yeah. So, anyway, um, so that's Grave Encounters, everyone. So, let's look at reception, shall we, Mike? And find oh, out. I liked it there. And uh, find uh, out what their I'm reaction well, was. Well, no, let's just go back a few things there. Okay, right. Um, yeah, right. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, yeah. Filming. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, it was filmed at. 
I just go through them all this makes it easier to say going back and forwards so paperwork. Mm-hmm. Call it Riverview Hospital, a mental institute in uh Coquitlam, is it? In British Columbia. Uh the hospital has been in several movies, uh and and pro- T V productions. Okay, here we go. Most of the special effects were uh is it some CGI, not much. You know, with the, the changes of faces and stuff. Of course. Yeah. That sort of stuff, yeah. Um, but a lot of it was just ordinary stuff. Yeah, which is good. They made, kept, the, kept, kept the basic. Um, had, had a limited release, but, um, I believe. Um, okay. And, but went on to, uh, you yeah, know, home network and stuff. Uh, now, Rotten Tomatoes, here we go. 67%. Uh, okay, um, doesn't say any comments there. Metacritic assigns a normal rating uh, only about 33%. Ooh. But that doesn't mean anything. See, people might not like found footage, you see. So that's why they don't like it. Maybe. Now, um, Maybe. New York Times. Um, following the stampeding footsteps of the Blair Witch Project and the Pan Paranormal Activity franchise, the filmmakers seem unaware that they are beating a dead horse. Exactly what I said. There's been too much of the found footage stuff. However, it does make for an inexpensive film. However, there we go. Um, go blah, 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 blah. Uh, went on to say uh, that the film's claustrophobic. Uh, uh, infrared images supposedly taken from the tapes of a TV crew. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, yeah. He said it was too repetitious. So, what yeah, does that mean, repetitious? Samey. Same oh, yeah, yeah, see, see, it, 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 it just kept going and going and going with no major changes in what was going on. But they're doing an investigation near the nut house. Hello? It, it ain't going to change. It has to be the same. Otherwise, oh, we're going to go on a cruise to Bali now. Go, yeah, yeah, so, you know, yeah, some of these people got no idea. Anyway, um, so Slant Magazine, they gave it a one and a half stars out of four. Can't even pretend to be anything other than hopelessly derivative, which means they've borrowed too much from other movies of its ilk. It's supposed to be a mockumentary, you moron. The moron doesn't understand they're taking bits out of other movies. Look, what's a, what's a movie that's comedy horror? Is it a scary movie? Yeah, scary. They movie. took all those things out of all the other movies and put it in there and made it funny, mm. right? They took it yeah, from a parody. other movies. Dickhead. Yeah, um, it's only a parody. If that's yeah, what parody. And when it's a parody, you take things out of other movies and you make it funny. It's like Will, Will, Weird Al Yankovic. He takes a serious song and he changes the lyrics. Oh, so yeah, the yeah, fact yeah, that yeah. Um, the part where the people in the in the production keep forgetting about the part about the lock windows, the fact that there's no exit or entrance that will be unlocked for them, that they be that the place was built like a fortress and they seem to forget about it. And you always tell me, Mike, that uh, peop- that I naturally forget stuff, certain <laughs> stuff. Yeah. But I think these people are no different. Yeah. In their- I think that's why they always try to make these movies to make resemble us because we can sometimes forget or be st- um, forget something. You may say that, that people are, are rub- horrible when they... Forget stuff, but this happens in real life a lot. Well, you know, I, I said this guy is it's saying it's, they're talking. The, the reviewers are talking about it like it's supposed to be a serious movie. It's a mockumentary. It's like, it's like um, mm. T- Dale and Tugger versus Evil. Mm. They took the theme of the similar type of movies and put it into a comedy movie. Obviously, they're going to have the same sort of theme in there, but from a comical twist. Mm. Okay. Uh, all the other mockumentaries take stuff and take the piss out of them and put them into a different concept. Mm. Okay, make it funny. That's what doing it. This is a horror, but it's a mockumentary. Yeah. So it's a it's a send up of all the other stuff. Yes. Yeah, so this so is. So they've no. missed that plot. Yeah, they did. And that's why they're not getting good reviews here. Okay. So. Move yeah. On. Here, now, conversely, here you go. John Reese of the New York Press called Grave Encounters the scariest film since The Ring. See? Okay. Dennis Harvey, in his review of the film for Variety, wrote that its creepiness factor is sufficient to rate this a notch above average, uh, uh, above, uh, above genera, genera average, or whatever, yeah. Okay. 
Uh, he's saying it's above average. Okay, yeah. he's scariest movies in fall. Um, Vox Dylan Scott recommended the film, writing that it effectively spoofs. Spoofs. Yeah, parody, paradises. Yeah. Uh, those Gust Hunter shows that were briefly a hot trend. So he's picked up on the fact that they're taking the Mickey out of them, eh? Yeah, at least While someone does know what still building about. toward a genuinely suspenseful second half. Hmm. So there's, these guys were switched on. They actually understood what the movie's supposed to be about. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, Megan Navarro. Um, um, uh, for, for uh, Bloody Disgusting, um, mm. his name in the magazine or whatever, wrote that the filmmakers toss uh, subtlety out the window in favour of fun. In your face, chills. Uh, that, um, well, I'd rather in the face chills than nothing at all. They're landing. Um, yeah. Okay, uh, Felicity Burton of Screen Magazine wrote that had the film kept to a subtle, uh, to subtle scares and dumped the CGI ghosts, it would have been a lot better. But concluded, if you still haven't had your fill or found footage film, it's definitely worth a watch. Yeah. So these last film reviewers understand it's a parody. Okay? Yeah, but you've got and to that's admit, Mike... why they actually liked it. Yeah. They look, took it for what it was. Yeah, but you've got to admit, Mike, I mean, <laughs> if you've seen Ghost Adventures and all those other ghost-related oh, yeah, ghost shows, yeah, yeah. and unlike this movie... What does um does is that this if they took away all the weird stuff like the weird ghost okay, appearing if you watch stuff like, like ghost that. adventures and different things yeah. and, and similar programs yeah. like that I'm sorry to say they are about as I've watched them all as many as I can get and they're all the same and they're as boring as bats pee because nothing happens in them. Yeah, so, guys, if... Oh, we heard something. That could have yeah. been the building settling for the night. Yeah. You, know, that's a, you so don't see or see anything. The point is, guys, <coughs> you keep on... These guys, who are the reviewers who don't get it and think, oh, tr- try to keep it looking like the the real Ghost Adventure-related stuff. Yeah, but not really. But it will be boring if it was just, oh, we're going inside there, we'll just check hey, a look. few sounds, and then we will... Um, rec- and then we'll... Be, you know, rec- show it to you the next day. How boring! Now, now it's. I point, mean, the, if there's the no chase is, scenes and none, in no scenes where the yeah. um, it's it's raw footage where people are running around being chased down by the ghosts and yeah, the exactly ghosts right. are creepier yeah, and they're exactly right. making in their reality, appearance. It's not like that. But yeah. if you look, I think okay, okay, Ghost Adventures with you know, Zach, whatever his name, I can't remember, Zach Baggins. Yeah. Mm. Now he had a good show going there. Now. Yeah, he went to a lot of known haunted sites. Right. But obviously, he had to make it exciting and interesting and stuff, even though not a lot happened in some of these sites, because some of it's just hearsay. Mm-hmm. Okay? Um, so he tried his best to make it interesting. So mm-hmm. I'm not knocking the guy. Okay? Mm-hmm. Uh, but in some cases there, I think some of it was, I wouldn't say fabricated, but they really... Um, it showed his acting skills a lot better than his uh, investigation skills. Let's just say that. They, 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 nothing really happened in most of those shows, but they tried to make out, oh, we saw something, oh, we heard something, oh, I've got a bad feeling in this room. Ribbit. 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 And it happened from show after show after show. Yeah. I think it ran too many seasons. Yeah. So <laughs> what these reviewers yeah. keep saying, the ones who don't yeah. get it, keep thinking, keep it real as much as you can. But, yeah. but okay, guys. But this R- is real a parody. Real isn't, isn't really necessarily good. No, no, but this is a parody. It's a send-up. So exactly. you can bend the rules a bit. It's like, yeah. you know, it's like, uh, how do you put um, how do you put it? Like a cartoon. Mm. A cartoon character doesn't get away with anything. Right. Because they're not real. Even knows it's a load of crap. Okay, right? Mm-hmm. Now, if you get human beings doing the same stuff, you say, this is rubbish. See what I mean? So there's, it, it depends on how you take it. Mm-hmm. Now, this here is a pa- paranormal or supernatural parody horror type thing, and it has to be taken and assessed in that genre. There you go. Mm-hmm. Anyway, enough said. Okay, we're boring these people. That guy out there is yawning. Can't you see him? Yeah. yeah right. I do think this movie... I wish people didn't take it for granted because, it's but then movie. again, as I said before, a lot, a lot of, of money. a lot of found footages came out 
in those years, in those in those short years, and they make it difficult to know which ones the best ones and which this ones are one. not to. This is it's watch. fun. I've seen some boring ones. This is fun. Yes, there are some slow bits in it. You can't have action scenes. The ghosts yeah. aren't chasing them around the rooms. Yeah, okay? and not to mention, yeah. we do get to yeah. see full view of the ghosts. Of them, and yeah, yeah. we do see... Um, and on a cheap budget, that's not bad. And stuff like that. And we do see stuff, guys. Unlike in the other ones where we're just left with their say their say on what they said, they seen, they think they see, while the rest of us are trying to figure out Okay, I'm taking their word for it, but why am I not going to see this happening to that person? I mean, we've seen the guy who just got drowned in the bath, and the next minute we see he disappear. Right? Isn't that right, Mike? Yep. And then there's the fact if we didn't have the ghosts wandering around at one point looking like normal, and then the next minute looking like they were zombies, that will well taking away that sort of thing would just be like. Well, just um, it would not be fun. Uh, I mean, the and the um, just having creepy voices or creepy objects yeah, flying yeah. is not enough. No, nah, you need something. Anyway, they, they achieve it. Now, it's something I just noticed in the, in, uh, in the notes here in developing it. The two guys, uh, yeah, the, the Vicious Brother guys, okay. they wrote a script for the film, roughly eighty-five pages in length. Eighty? Wow. Wait a minute, eighty-five length. Though they allowed the members of the cast to improvise during filming, obviously, yeah. you know, hey, I was running around here, somebody you know, yeah. throw your own words in, it feels mm-hmm. more comfortable. But you were told when you were doing your filming things that average script's about 150, uh, I mean, um, 150 pages long. Well, it's, um, yeah, it's actually, yes, you know, what? Because it's, yeah, about 150 or, or 130, or depending on the, s- the, the story, yeah. how long you can milk yeah. the story a little yeah. bit. Yeah, so you don't need to have people talking consistently all the way through it. You don't need to have a scene description all the time. These guys, you can write, write up 85 pages in a couple of days and make a halfway decent movie subject to read roughs. Mm-hmm. So, see, they did One it. One thing that bothers me, Mike, is mm. that the people who... Um, from that the the production company, the guy who had the opening. We saw it. Yeah. Um, well, how did he get access uh, to the well, they, cameras? Well, no, they opened footage? up the building the following morning, and they didn't find anybody, but they found the old cameras. Yeah, they probably and did. And they would deliver back to him because he was financing it. He was a production company. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, I should mention, guys. There is a <laughs> sequel that came out just you know after See, this. What was one. it called? Grave Encounters Two. What a great name! And this one deals with um, where the the first Grave Encounters movie becomes a, a movie D- on DVD and released. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, independent filmmaker who's a student decides to do his own um, investigation into what happened. Is that the one that went to a house or something, rather? Or what? is that the one that went to a house or they something? They went to the same, um, oh, same place. Same place. Yeah, of course, yeah. mm. l- unlike um, what was in the movie, um, where they changed the name of the site, they, they were able to find the actual hospital in the end. And, of course, um, according to – at the – post credit scene, you see the um, coordinates to where, the ha- say, the house is. You know, if you look at, up the coordinates on um, Facebook, or I mean on Facebook, we can Google it, you'll be, you be able to find it and be able to know where exactly where to find where, it. Where it was. Where it was, if it was. No, it's been bulldozed. Yes. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so let's write this now, guys. Look, now, again, I try to be fair. This is a low-budget, independent Film uh-huh. done on a shoestring budget, okay. Uh-huh. So, I'm not going to grade it the same way as an A movie. So, for mm. what it is, what they've done with the little bit of CGI that's thrown in, uh-huh. what they've done on a pretty much a no budget, um, I'm going to give these guys nine out of ten. Okay, so I've, I've taken the one point off, of course. It was a bit slow in some points, yeah. yeah. I would happen to agree with Mike here because. Um, the first bit was pretty much um, yeah, Well, you had to be slow. Boring, yeah, boring. but it's got to be slow. you got to build up. See, it didn't actually build up properly. It's just like, well, here we go, blah, 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 blah. But I can blah. say... And nothing was actually happening. But so, I can yeah. say it's better than the tunnel movie that um, that was done in Australia. 
Oh, yeah. We, we can make my review yeah, that well, one my one review day. that yeah. one day. Yeah. Some of you guys haven't, wouldn't have seen it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. as I said before, a lot of these found footage movies went under the radar and yeah. were either done by independent crowds yeah. and in order to try to strike one. it, um, you, know, indep- you know, strike fame or, or professionalism when you think about it. Anyway, so I'm going to rate this movie now. Uh, I think I'll make it... Nine and a half out of ten You're myself. so good. Yeah. Because, as Mike says, um, I didn't like how the first half was... Um, it, did, it, it dragged it, a little It dragged bit. a bit. Yeah, yeah. And, and then, it got a bit more interesting in the second half. Yeah, it did yeah. get yeah, interesting yeah. as the second yeah, half. But the build-up wasn't there. It went from boring to a little bit of action thrown there. And instead of a build-up, they could have had the slow bit and then things happening behind the scenes mm-hmm. to cut away the door opening, something happening yeah. or... Or something. I heard something you know, a loud noise, but they they missed the opportunity to build up the suspense. But has it? I did mm. like the mm. fact that all through it, um, they questioned their own sanity. Like the characters in this, who kept wondering, it's it's still dark out there when it ought to be night morning by yeah. now, and and it's supposed to be two days to have passed. Sort of yeah, thing. about forty eight hours, and the sun hasn't ri- uh, hasn't risen. So yeah. Yeah, mm. and the place is locked up like a like Four a drum, knocks. and <laughs> it makes you wonder what if the the people in the next morning when they found did they yeah. found their did they, they find anything or did they or did their bodies disappear? No, all they did they, they was the crew disappeared. All they found was the cra- the cameras mm. and the audio equipment and stuff mm. and telephones maybe or whatever yeah. that dropped on the ground. Mm-hmm. Everything else was gone. Yeah, a bit like like rose red. Mm. Yeah. The, Anyone who died became part of the house, like a permanent <laughs> guest. Yeah, that's a good movie. Yeah, I and mean, we might not be, we haven't reviewed that, have we? No, per se. Uh, yeah, but we, I we hope may to. or may not. But uh, and uh, Rose Red, a Stephen King novel f- from memory, and um, a damn fine yeah. movie. Yeah, it's a pretty good movie. Mm, yeah. All or right, mini series or whatever. Yeah. Well, I haven't. F- I don't know if it, um, Rose Red was actually a, uh, I think a, it was a book or a movie. No, I don't think no. it's. A, I don't think it was a, I'll have to have a book. book. I'll have to look. I think it was Stephen King, was it? Yeah, I know it was Stephen King, Mike. I'm just well, saying well, that. Stephen King would have I'm been just a book saying first. it. It may have been a, just a, a movie series, but it was not a book series. I'm oh, just yeah. saying. I'll have to have a look. I yeah. mean, I'm not sure. I could be wrong. Anyway, irrespective, anyway, Rose Red is a type. Yeah, that's a good one. A really ghosty one. Okay, so that's Grave Encounters. So be sure to check it out. And next week we'll try to. Next time we'll actually review Grave Encounters two. Yeah, so, we might as well so keep, the, keep the ball rolling. Keep the ball rolling and keep the audience happy because um, I think in the, when they did, I think in that, that one it deals with a boy who's also a movie film critiquer. You know, as a aside from being an independent oh, he went filmmaker, he went there by himself to go and redo what they're doing. Well, not to, redo it. He was doing it with. He wanted to find out what happened. To what happened to yeah, them? Well, if, and, yeah, 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 yeah. Investigate a yeah. report on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and he wanted to do a. He was an independent filmmaker, like a student awesome. filmmaker, and he was um, in this part time. I guess he does film rev- rec- film critiquing for movies in general, you know, stuff like that. Of course, he didn't like the the original Grave Encounters. Thought it was uh, not really good because of the <laughs> graphics yeah. and stuff like that. But could be helped because the, because who knows how what. Spir- the spirits would look wa- look like in in the in the haunted house. Anyway, so I'll be sure to review that one it, uh, as, uh, after this one, obviously. So, okay, this is about it from us guys. So be sure to check out Grave Encounters and let us know in the comments w- which you think is your favorite found footage movie out there. Yeah, well, I I, I think it's a good watch. This one, I mean there. It's I, it's one of the better fan footages. Yeah. I as don't I like fan footage yeah. generally. It's not I, bad though. As I said in the past, guys, this movie is not for everyone. If mm. you, yeah, as I said, with Miss M- Megan missing, that movie would no doubt be not for everyone either. So no, this would so not be one of those movies that would just be for everyone either. Well, I'm, having said that. Well, it's true, Mike. I mean, <laughs> the fact that not everyone's the same out there, no. and anyway, everyone anyway, has different hello. opinions about the movie. Okay, so that's about it from us yep. tonight. So be sure to check it out and let us know in the comments what you think of this yeah, movie. Yeah, please. I mean, keep us informed as much as you can because uh, if you're enjoying it, 
we know we're on the right track. Right. If you think it's not that enjoyable, well, excuse me, please tell us and say why, not just say we don't like it, and say why you, know, oh, you want newer movies, older movies, or a different type of movie, and we'll try and bring some in. Yes. So that's it from us tonight, guys. This is Sarah Stevenson. And Michael. Saying see you guys around on Boys and Ghouls Film Review. Ooh. See you. See you around, guys. (laughs) Oh, well, bye.